Hey, thanks for joining us. Instead of bringing you a pre-recorded live chat premiere episode today with the guys from Market Rebellion, we're actually uh, coming to you live like we did this morning before Coinbase started trading. And now it has begun trading, start trading 1.30 uh, p.m. Eastern time on the NASDAQ exchange, quickly escalated up to a 70% gain. Um, and now we're going to take a look at where this has ended up. So uh, I'm interested in getting the analysis from uh, the gentleman on the screen. We got CJ Monty, crypto analyst from MarketRebellion.com. Um, and, you know, everybody, thanks for joining us. First of all, just want to start off anything from uh, Trade the Chain or Market Rebellion is not to be construed as financial advice or any of that uh, good stuff. Um, you can't blame us for anything. Uh, there's a disclaimer. We'll leave it up for 10 seconds so you can read it. Um, and that's about it. Uh, but one of the things that's really interesting that we're going to go through today is all the different uh, Bitcoin exposed companies, um, because it's really interesting to see what's correlating with Bitcoin, whether it's this direct listing that uh, that popped um or if it's doing its own thing so uh cj first of all take us into uh pull up coinbase's chart if you could let's run through what that went through from its listing at 1 30 p.m eastern time today yeah just let me uh bring down a very short chart here all right so we're looking at the one minute and yeah you know after a very Interesting increase. A um, lot of apes jumping in here at the start of the day uh, around 375, push price all the way up to almost, um, you know, 430. And now let's see how far we've fallen since then. Um, yeah, roughly 23 to 25% here as we get down towards the lower 300s. Um, still around 330, but uh, I just think this was a very overcrowded trade, especially from retail to start the day. Um, but that being said, I'm still very long-term bullish on coin. I think it's very overvalued um, right now. But like I said earlier, when we were talking with Donish and, and on the live stream this morning, I think that the Kathy Woods of the world and a lot of those institutional players want exposure to Coinbase because... It's, it's much different than just owning something like Riot or Mara or MicroStrategy, a company that's just buying Bitcoin. Because those really, they really only give you exposure to Bitcoin. But Coinbase will give you exposure to uh, the entire trend in crypto as a whole. It will give you experience exposure to, um, say, Ethereum or like the trading fees generated on a platform like that. So it's very interesting. Um, See if we can get this chart reloaded. Yeah, CJ, I think you make a great point there. And, you know, that's one of the things I think is so unique about this listing is kind of, you know, we got interest in this listing from both sides. We got interest on the institutional end and on the retail end, which is a pretty unique phenomenon. But, you know, back what you were saying about the institutional interest in the space, I think that's a great point, right? Like right now, if you look at you know, the, the vehicles for exposure for these institutions in traditional equities, you have basically Riot, Mara. I mean, I guess you have Square and Silvergate. But for the most part, like your exposure is limited to the mining sector. So, you know, this is a unique opportunity for institutions to kind of get exposure to crypto in an entirely different sense. Because, I mean, crypto is a, a, a hugely broad phenomenon, right? And to kind of focus the equities on just the mining aspect, I think is, is very limiting. So, you know, Coinbase, I think is just the beginning. I think we're going to see a lot more, you know, eventual listings down the road that open up more opportunities for institutional exposure. But I mean, speaking to today's price action, I mean, it's just been absolutely crazy. I think we'll probably end up around 360, you know, the target price, but it reminds me of, you know, when we get a new listing of a, you know, a small altcoin on an exchange or, uh, you know, one of those SIG dev alerts from Trade the Chain, it takes some time for the asset to kind of find its price. You know, it's it doesn't necessarily, the, the clear value isn't always uh, uh, perfectly clear right away. So, you know, this is just an example of that. It's going to take some time for it to find its value. Um, 
But one question I have for you guys, you know, if you didn't get filled at the open today, what price would you consider buying? Are, are you considering buying this dip after running up to 400? Does that run up change like the psychology of this trade at all? Uh, any thoughts? No, I, that, that's an interesting question. Now, there's a couple of things. If you move to the minute this uh, started trading, you can see that it started, um, uh, I believe it was uh, 380 or somewhere in that neighborhood. Now, um, one of the interesting things is that this was given a 250 price uh, for guidance by NASDAQ yesterday evening. So what I'd like to know, because there's still performance uh, that's based off of $250 um, at the start. So is this something where it's like an IPO where the floor price was 250, but it, 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 it got shot up to, to 380 for launch? I'm not sure, but on some platforms like Robinhood, Fidelity, it's actually still showing 250 for uh, its launch price. Whether I buy the dip or not on this, I don't know. I feel like, Monty, we're in uncharted territory, right? I mean, this is the first of probably a handful of exchanges, crypto exchanges to go public. And we have no idea what this what this beast is going to do and how the public reception is. Yeah, I completely agree, Alex. And for that reason, I, I'm not going to touch this today. But, you know, I'm just so interested to see how this plays out. Because back to CJ's initial point, you know, I really think there's going to be strong, strong interest from the institutions and also from the retail side. And I think, you know, there's good evidence for kind of the retail speculation on this asset. One term that CJ has been using a lot that I'm excited to use because you don't get to use it often in finance <laughs> is cannibalization. It's a fun word. It's, it's an exciting word. <laughs> but I think that's exactly what we're seeing here is like a bit of cannibalization within crypto. You know, some altcoins are, are taking some losses today. We talked a little bit about KNC and Stormex. And, you know, I think people are just, you know, it's not getting the attention it typically has on any given day because the retail money is just focused on coin right now. So, you know, this is a really interesting curveball that's being thrown into the market. And, you know, before I feel comfortable really determining its value, I think it just needs some time to, you know, be traded a little bit. Yeah, I want to, um, if I can just share something real quick. And that is, if you look to what, what you just said, CJ, if you look at the overall um, sentiment of crypto today, it's, it's been short-term bearish and neutral, I mean, the whole single time. And even if you go over to uh, the Bitcoin chart, we had a, you know, we had a serious retract retracement this morning, uh, you know, when we got on the air for the uh, initial coverage of Coinbase. And not only that, it carried over into the other uh, crypto exposed stocks. So you look at, you know, Voyager Digital. Voyager was something that I was looking at as maybe a play because now Coinbase is public. It's going to start carrying over to the others around it. No, it sank. We look at uh, Bit Digital. Look at this. Boom, sank. Look at Riot down. Everything down. So I don't know what exactly the trend was there, whether it was the Coinbase IPO or if it was Bitcoin itself. I don't know. Any thoughts, CJ? Yes. And I think it's more about Bitcoin and the technicals. Uh, it's interesting. John had, had said it all along that this would probably be the high point of the week. Um, today, Wednesday, being when the IPO or the direct listing actually occurred. Um, so I do want to go to the Bitcoin chart. I do want to draw a little bit for you guys. Um, so on the one day here, we've been highlighting this ascending triangle for quite a while. Yesterday was the first day we actually broke out, but it wasn't with huge momentum. It was like just, just barely opening the door. And in, on the four hour time frame, we ran into this TD cell nine um, and we're, we've gotten a rejection and have come down ever since. However, that 61 level is still immensely strong when it comes to the weekly chart. That's the key Fibonacci level we've been battling for weeks now. So typically when we break out of ascending triangles, um, a lot of the things in what we'll see is, you know, we'll see these uh, 
we'll see, you know, price bounce around. Then once it finally breaks up, uh, you know, it was a nice move and, you know, it got you all the way to 64 K just about, but we hit that TD sell nine right at the top of the trend. And many times when you'll do that after a breakout, you'll back test that previous resistance level, find support and then bust even higher. Um, so I'm expecting some, some price action like that to occur. Um, we'll see if we get something similar to that, uh, but that would be most characteristic um, in my view right now. And uh, I think all that sell pressure is just bleeding into a lot of the Bitcoin related stocks. If you take a, a look on the right side of my watch list here, you can see Riot, Mara, MicroStrategy, Silvergate, all of the main blockchain players are all down double digits today. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of just carries off uh, the, the fact that we're seeing a, a little tight sell off here in Bitcoin. So I am still optimistic for the rest of the week. Do, do you think, do you think the TD sell nine right before uh, the listing was bad luck? I mean, do you, that it didn't, it did. Do you think that had anything to do with the downward pressure today? I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's technical. <laughs> it obviously did. Um, you know, I meant with the Coinbase uh, listing. Yeah, well, you know, the sequential indicator, it essentially tells you when, you know, the trend is exhausted. And I think, I mean, we knew the date of this listing for a while now. So I think a lot of people kind of front front ran this news. And I think that's why, you know, the trend was kind of exhausted when we finally did get here today. But, you know, I think CJ made a great point about that 61K, 62K Fibonacci level, because, you know, it felt like we were trapped in that ascending triangle for quite a while. And one thing that I noted um, and that was, I saw on Twitter as well from Whale Map. There was a, a large amount of inflows to whale wallets at 60K. So that kind of, you know, reaffirms CJ's position that we may actually get some support at the 61K level because whales are taking their money and putting it away into cold storage at around that same price. There is also something else that very interestingly happened um, that I'm going to pull up here. And that was uh, the fact that 130 this listed. And at 130, this happened. What you're looking at is a whale alert of all the Bitfinex 2016 theft money. We're talking a couple of hundred million dollars. At the same time Coinbase started trading, it started moving to uh, unknown unknown wallets. Coincidence? I think not. I think everybody was so busy <laughs> looking and so busy with this IPO. All of a sudden, this pops up and we get a couple hundred million dollars moving from the uh, Bitfinex hacks in, 20, in 2016. I mean, how, wow. Yeah, that is a lot of money, a lot of money. Hard to move that without people noticing. But, you know, I actually saw, I saw Ryan tweeted that a little bit ago. And there are some people in the replies, like debating, you know, can they spend that money? Can they, can they get that off wallets? And yeah, they can, you know, like right now they're moving it in mass. So it's kind of easy to see where it's going, but there are ways to get that money out of cold storage back into, sure. back into, uh, you know, exchanges via coin mixers or whatnot. And you know, it was a, was a pretty smart move to choose today to move it because attention is elsewhere. Yeah. And uh, to your point, it does take a little time to get it through the mixers and the tumblers and uh, the various things they have going on. Because as we all know, <clears throat> excuse me, K KYC and AML is ramping up uh, day over day at exchanges to get that off in fiat. So interesting. Um, you know, any uh, any thoughts on on Doge hitting a buck? Uh, what, is it, what did it hit today? 14? Yeah, like 14. <clears throat> yeah. Any uh, any news on that? Did you see uh, the morning coverage? We had uh, that guy, Guy Ferrari. Who, who's the, the, the fast food chef? He tweeted himself in a space suit about Dogecoin. Is is that the go-to thing now? Is that just, is that what you do when you want popularity? You just go on Twitter and maybe you're a D-lister or something and you just hashtag Bitcoin or Doge and that brings you back up to A-lister? Yeah, it could that? be. I mean, we were joking today, Gene Simmons, that man bought Doge like a month ago. And, you know, I laughed at him at the time, but now 
he's probably laughing at me. We have to stop laughing at Doge for once. <laughs> true. True. Um, you know, it's funny. You guys remember the conversation we had like months ago with Ryan after we, after the first pump happened and, and we asked, what are the fundamentals of Dogecoin? Um, the fundamentals. You uh, almost walked off on camera, by the way, Zarin. <laughs> I don't remember that. <laughs> I think I was wearing my robe for that. Episode, so it was difficult to take me seriously, but um, Doge has fundamentals in the sense that it's almost a, an internet anomaly in the sense that it's this community built around Jackson Palmer that uh, thinks this Doge is absolutely hilarious. Elon Musk picked it up and people just won't forget it because it's become an, an it's, it's become an iconic part of the cryptocurrency market. Whether or not you think it's a serious long-term viol- viable investment, um, you know, that we don't know. Like it definitely could be. Who would have said Litecoin would have made it this long? Um, you know, I think there's just uh, as large of an argument to be made that, you know, do we need Doge? Do we need Litecoin? Like they're just forks of Bitcoin. But I believe that Dogecoin is, is truly an anomaly at this point in the sense that it, it likely will continue to pump and increase with the bull market. Um, it's just kind of, it's built that fundamental sentiment. And now you can see we are correcting on a TD cell nine. And, and I do expect price to come down a little bit with Bitcoin here, but like will Dogecoin pump again, possibly to 20 cents? Uh, I think so. Wow. Okay. I mean, that's big words. Um, and if any of you guys know uh, Rob over digital asset news, you'll know that Doge's biggest contender has just launched a short time ago. And that's tomato coin. Um, it is live. And that's a real thing. I'm not even lying. Um, okay, cool. Guys, uh, this is great. I, I look forward to following this up. You know, we're going to we're gonna do, um, we're going to have a little market wrap up and see where the trading day ends, which is in just about 47 minutes now. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. And I'm definitely paying attention to CNBC because the CNBC who never, I mean, whenever they get Novogratz or anybody else into the room and on the show and stuff like that, they immediately try to like end that segment as quick as possible. That's how they've always done it. Um, They've spent more time talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency today than they have in their whole history combined, I think. Um, So that in itself is a big move forward for the industry. And I'm, I'm happy to see that. Um, Now we just need them to make sure that they understand what cryptocurrency is, Um, but they will. It's all good. All right, folks, thanks for joining us for this update. Uh, We'll do a market wrap and see where this day ends. Um, Coinbase, probably the most prolific IPO uh, out of any company in a long, long time, but definitely um, the most uh, instrumental one for us uh, people in crypto as all of it now, now you just can't ignore it. So we're happy it happened and we'll see where it goes.